So, do you have a room rented here? Doesn't matter. You need to go too. You can't criminally trespass me here unless you're the property owner, so get with that. Oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah, good Lord. I know my rights. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey guys, Mike Blue here, the guy over there at the Oregon Cop Watcher YouTube channel. I just wanted to touch base with you guys a little bit. A friend of mine pointed me at this uh, Willamette Week article that I just find just crazy. It reminds me of the kind of stuff that you would see in a documentary film from the 1930s about communist China and communist Chinese oppression, but uh... Yeah, so, can you see that? Oregon hospitals rely on prison labor to do their laundry during the pandemic. My comment is, this shit right here is straight out of communist China. Rona slave labor. Oh, and I'm sure our criminal, in quotes, our criminal underclass, because that's what the system calls them, would never cough or nasty up some pillowcases or sheets or laundry they're, they're coerced into doing. Can you say viral nightmare? And then my uh, friend uh, Sean Geiger uh, uh, added this. This is a quote from her friend. <laughs> now we know how the virus made its way into the prison system. So this is the government and officials in this country's way of trying to deal with this coronavirus outbreak. Now, can you imagine taking filthy, virused-up laundry from hospitals and shipping it into a confined space? Because that's the whole idea of a prison, is you have a whole bunch of little confined boxes that you allow the prisoners into from one section to the other to uh, make it harder for them to escape. So, what we have here is a situation where they're taking a massive amount of dirty, stinking laundry. It's laundry that people with viruses have pissed in and shit in and laid on and sweat, sweated on. And you're taking it into a prison environment and having prisoners um, who have limited access to PPE gear. You're taking prisoners that have limited access to... Um, you know, hand sanitizer, they have, they have limited access to everything because that's what prison is. It's limited access, even limited access to air and uh, uh, adequate soap and things like that. So it's a cycle. They're, they're uh, sending a huge amount of tainted viral load having stuff all over it into these confined prison environments, having prisoners handle them, and then they're shipping that back to the hospital. So you're getting this disgusting thing going back and forth, and I'm sure, I am sure there will be hundreds, if not thousands of people that catch this virus and or may die because of how people perceive those that have been imprisoned. Okay, these people have human rights. These people have dignity. These people have the same rights and protections, quote, given to them. It's not really given to them, to them by the Constitution. The Constitution is merely a list of, uh, of things that the government may or may not do. Um, but that's an entirely different com uh, conversation. But just on a humanistic level, these people have rights. They have the right to live. They have the right to be healthy. They have the right to have a safe environment. And government and these fascist fucking hospitals, because when government and uh, corporations work together, you know, for their own benefit, that is the very definition of the economics of fascism. So this is nothing more than coronavirus being used as a way to get away with fascistic type crap. But, uh, you know, uh, end of rants, uh, unless anybody wants to come in here and talk about this. But yeah, I'm talking about this article where they're saying they're using prison labor to do the laundry from hospitals. So you have people in prison being uh, exposed to all this virus stuff and they don't have access to decent uh, sanitation. They do not have access to decent PPE gear. They don't get masks or goggles. Um, and they're expected to handle, you know, hundreds of pounds of laundry 
uh, if not thousands of pounds from, from these large hospitals. Like, this is crazy. This is a death sentence to people in a confined area where they have recycled air and uh, they're in these uh, prison tier systems. A lot of prisons will have uh, 100 people in a big, giant open room and have showers on one side and a guard uh, guard window on the other. It's just insane the kind of stuff that's going on. So, hi, guys. Uh, that is a lot of uh, a lot of people saying, hey, I'll wave, wave at Jessica and... Uh, PDX Atheist and everybody. If any of you guys want to jump in, uh, I don't know how to invite somebody into a Facebook conversation. I know I can I can figure it out, but the only safer over straight inside is the pigs, so they already don't care about... Yes, they don't. Corona is the excuse for everything. They don't have the revenue to pay hospital staff because of essential health. Yes, exactly. I mean, this is just disturbing stuff, guys. It really is. Like, and, and I'm sure this is probably happening all over the country. So you're going to get, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's hospitals inside the prisons, as you well know. And there's a lot of medically fragile people in the prisons that will be made sick, if not die. You know, and one of the things that happens to people when they get this virus, guys, is they have diminished lung capacity for life. So just just from from getting it like there's healthy people that get it and then you know they have a diminished ability to get oxygen and uh to, to their blood and their body for the rest of their lives and oh wow oh yeah jessica has a friend who works as an rn in, in prisons yeah um i I don't know if there's much more to be said about this other than it's an egregious human rights violation and it is fascism okay you know, if you look up uh, fascism in the uh, Merriam-Webster, it says right-wing authoritarian uh, government, sure. Benito Mussolini's government was uh, uh, right in some ways and left in others. I mean, that's an entirely other conversation. But if you just look at the economic system of fascism, it's corporations like these hospitals and government working in tandem to profit and to benefit themselves at – the expense of the people. And that's precisely what's done to people in prisons right now. And, you know, it's just, wow, it's beyond the pale. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please do, please, please do share this. And also I have a really great uh, announcement. I recently did a First Amendment audit at the Albertina Kerr, uh, one of their mental health facilities for youth. And it's basically like a, a prison where they keep every uh, all the kids on drugs. But I was contacted by a um, employee of Al Albertina Kerr. I'm going to be doing an interview. I'm going to call the guy Mr. X to protect his anonymity. But I will be getting the inside scoop of somebody who worked in one of these juvenile detention facilities uh, at 3, I'm going to do that interview, and then I'm going to put that audio interview up on YouTube and on Facebook here to share with folks. But yeah, that's going to be awesome. So the guy worked in a group home ran by Albertina Kerr for three years, and he's going to give me all the inside scoop on all this crap about what's been going on. You know, uh, hi, Aspen, that's awesome. All right, guys, so uh, yeah, please do check out that uh audio interview about how youth are being treated in these mental health facilities and it's just horrible it, it may as well be a gulag you know america has reached the point of alexander schultz's niece's gulag archipelago if you google that uh Search Amazon books for Gulag Archipelago. You can read all about that system. But we, what we have here is just as much tyranny as they had in Nazi Germany. We just have all of it compartmentalized. You have people being tyrannized in the mental health system. You have th this entire underclass of everyone who's ever been in trouble with the law. Everybody's a, Everybody that's a felon is treated as a separate uh, sort of underclass because it's harder for them to get work. People that are 
uh, 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 people of color, people that are minorities, they're being treated economically different than everyone else. You have all these little subclasses of people that are being oppressed in America, and the idea is that the average American doesn't see it because it's all compartmentalized away from each other. In uh, classical tyranny and uh, fascism from the 1930s, 1920s, uh, 1940s, it was more overt. It was more of a blanket thing, and you could see the defining line of, you know, the haves and the have-nots. But right now, people have these reality boxes. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm an anarchist. I'm a, I'm a minarchist. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm an atheist. I'm this, that, and the other thing. And there's so many little subclasses that divide and conquer people so that our minds can't connect the dots. I mean, if you want to understand our society better, look at the money. Like, screw all the labels. Look at what is done with the money by the ruling classes, by the people that, uh, the, the, the political class of our society. Look at, um, basically we have inside out socialism in America. Okay, socialism on paper is a really great idea. You know, but in theory, when you get 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 uh, w when you uh, take the theory and put it into practice in a centralized government, what you end up uh, uh, having is uh, more tyranny and more corporatism. See, right now, lobbyists and politicians have turned socialism inside out. And what I mean by that is socialism is basically, uh, in a socialist country, you have a very very high tax rate, and that tax money is is distributed in theory in an equitable way to all all of the people in the society. Well, what we have right now is government has privatized what we have our our, our gross domestic product that that bit of our gross domestic domestic product that that is profit that is privatized and then what we owe is socialized. So the national debt is is uh, you know that's given equally to the people. They they figure out a way of taxing uh, the poor at a higher rate than they do the rich, which makes no sense, right? That's inside out socialism, and so you get a welfare system for corporations. Okay, just look at the uh, 2008 bailout where these uh, banking corporations should have failed. If there was an actual free market in this country, uh, people just don't understand economics. Like those banks should have failed and other institutions should have risen up and replaced it. But no, 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 no. See, um, oh, we have to give away, you know, uh, it ended, ended up being trillions of dollars to these big corporations. And this this coronavirus thing has, has been just the same kind of stuff. Okay. First thing Daddy Trump did was Daddy Trump got out his parent and started writing huge amounts of money to all his big corporate buddies, and then everybody else, like the average citizen, got like twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars cannot replace a job. It cannot replace uh, your housing. It cannot. Um, shit, I know people whose kids need eight hundred dollars a month, just you, you know, just to pay for their children's medication. This is ridiculous. Okay, America has you, you want to talk about curves in the media all the time? America has exceeded its uh curve, it, its threshold uh, of the curve of its patients. You know, if government doesn't either start opening up society, oh hey brother Tim. Uh if government doesn't start opening up society so that we can actually go out and work. I am uh less than $2000 away from my savings. Um I I have about uh, fifteen hundred dollars in the bank. My rent is thirteen hundred dollars a month, and and it's scary. I can't imagine how terrifying it must be right now for people with children that are facing homelessness because of this. Like, it, it's crazy. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, do share this video if you just jump right in. And you know, I just had a couple things that I wanted to talk about. And thanks for listening. All right, bye.